Well, speaking of two crazy guys, we had both Governor Newsom and <laughs> President Biden out here rolling out the red carpet, literally, for the leader of the Chinese Communist Party. Meanwhile, we've had, you know, our Congress in a bipartisan way trying to fight back on China and everything that it has done to undermine our country and our national security. Um, we're watching, as you mentioned before, you know, these kids on TikTok talking about uh, Osama bin Laden. And you know, nothing that the Chinese government is doing is not thought out. Well, China, let's, absolutely- excuse me, the China is behind TikTok. And, of course, I heard some stats today that if you talk to, I think it's 18 to 34-year-olds and some under, there, there's an average, like, their news. yeah, 30-some percent of, of uh, these different, younger demographics get their news from TikTok. That's it. So None of this is by accident. It is all brilliantly planned out by the Chinese Communist Party. And meanwhile, our two uh, idiots that are running the country and the state are rolling out the red carpet for them. It's absolutely ridiculous. When we've watched, you know, this guy, and also I will believe that the 10 freeway is fixed when it is fixed. Um, this is a guy who had a 10-year plan to end homelessness in San Francisco just this month in November, we have reached the 20th anniversary of that plan. So Governor Newsom is real big on talk, real big on setting these big, hairy, audacious goals, whether it's for housing, whether it's for the homeless crisis, whether it's for uh, crime. He has failed on all of those different things. Jessica Patterson, chair of the Republican Party here in California. What's interesting, I, I mean, pick a topic, a lot of form over substance, a lot of photo ops and all that. Um, but the big get yesterday was that uh, Xi Jinping told Biden that that they were going to be much better on the production of fentanyl, which is a huge crisis, as you know. And, and uh, you know, Newsom's been late to the program, to the program, to the problem on that in many ways. Um, but everybody knows that there's enough fentanyl coming across the border to kill like everybody multiple times over. And so they're finally getting on it. So uh, this does Biden and, and by connection do biden and newsom believe that anything the chinese government the communist government signs on to means anything because i've not seen is there i don't know what they've held up in terms of sticking to their word i haven't seen it on a lot of things and does it really matter does it really matter when we have the border as porous as we do right now uh in the southern part of california does it matter we have 110 people that are dying every single week in California alone. That's a, that's a Southwest flight. Can you imagine a plane flying, falling out of the sky mm. once a week? Mm. We would be doing something about it. It's absolutely ludicrous. And they don't need the Chinese government to make any promises for them to secure our border. They don't need to, you know, make any promises from a, a foreign uh, adversary when they could send the National Guard down to our border and make sure that the, the drugs are not coming across. Ah, but this is where Newsom would say, ridiculous. Newsom would say, I've sent them down there. They, he sends them down to observe. Remember, there was a few weeks ago he said he's doubling uh, whichever level of the of National Guard to do something. They're going to have double that. It went from like 12 to whatever it was. It was 6 to 12 or something like that. The percentages sound great. That's why we're doubling that or up 50% or whatever. It is a semantic dance. Um, In the meantime, we've had increasing oh-by-the-way moments where when it comes to security, a lot of this tied to the border. Christopher Wray, the head of the FBI, amped it up a little more yesterday and said, yeah, you know, Hamas might be planning, might, might be planning terror attacks on the USA. In the USA, we've had this this parade of people coming across. We don't know who's here. With it. We don't know the rap sheets from nations that don't cooperate with us. So it's not theory. And I don't know why they say it could happen. You know they're here. We had, back in 2001, we had two of the 19 terrorists that did what they did on September 11th living in our county. You know, among people, oh, the nicest guys until they weren't. So, and meanwhile, we have these violent rallies that are taking place, not only in campuses, uh, you know, across our country, but, you know, right in front of the DNC yesterday, we had the Democratic Socialists that are helping out these organizations that want to bring harm to Americans. And, you know, this is a very, very weak presidency. You know, when he was talking about Gavin Newsom last night, you know, being able to take his job. Yeah, I think that's probably going to happen sooner rather than later when it comes to being the nominee of the party. We saw in deep blue California, Biden's 
disapproval ratings are now over 52%. What does that tell you? It's not a swing state. It is not a a deep red state. This is blue California is saying, we don't like the Democrat nominee. They're going to be looking for someone else to run at the top of the ticket because okay, but, the rest of the world says we can. But this, as your your position as chair of the, of the California Republican Party for the state, um, I know there's polls. There's a Berkeley IGS poll that was out a few days ago saying the majority of California voters disapprove of Biden's job. And you look at some other movement, uh, how people are describing. But but even though, and, I, and I, I agree with you, that a lot of the problems, including the stuff we step into literally in the streets before, you know, President Xi comes to town and they clean things up, um, that that among anything, or, or the crime or, you know, smash and grabs and mob looting, what have you, uh, that or border security, that could have people on the left and right, regardless of parties, say, okay, we have to do something different. But, you know, the left and diehard Democrats will look at Republicans, and it's kind of like uh, Superman to kryptonite. You know, it's like, I don't want to get near that. That's not Republican because they, uh, they have all these phobias. Are you are you confident they're going to get some bigger traction there? Because there's so many things changing at once here, and it seems like a lot of opportunity. We do have a lot of opportunity, and that's why we've been able to pick up so many congressional seats over the last two cycles. We've been at a plus five. You know that we're at a a plus five majority in the House of Representatives, so we can thank California Republicans for that. But we're going on the offense in three more seats, and it's because, you know, we're looking at these seats that maybe at the top of the ticket they're not going Republican, but they're seeing the problems that Democrats have created in this state. And they're saying, we can do something different here. You know, we're playing in seats that Biden won by double digits, and we're winning. When you're playing in a D-plus 17.5% seat like David Valadeo's or a D-plus 14.5% like John Duarte, you know, we are doing something right when it comes to the candidates and their message within each one of these districts and, and drawing a contrast between what they will do and what Democrats in California have served up. So on the timeline, Jessica, what do we look for in terms of signs? If somebody says, you know, I'm in California, I love California, you know, like me, I, I, I go right, center right, sometimes more than, more than just a, a center right. I'm, I'm all for pragmatism. I don't want to be the last taxpayer in California, but I also love the state enough to stay here and, you know, the family here and everything. But, it does get discouraging at times. I mean, the fact that we went through twice with the recall of Gavin Newsom and then he gets selected again, it's easy to say, okay, why are we doing this again? Um, but but I, I just sense maybe the opportunity will be different now. But it's a, it's a tall order. And meanwhile, we've got chaos every day. I think all it's going to take is something horrific, maybe involving a border breach or whatever, heaven forbid. But... Where do you see this going, and, and is there a point where you think, you know, they're going to swap Biden out of this right now, and, and it'll be yeah, Newsom's time to step in? We, we will see that point where they, they don't believe that Biden can win, um, and the polling numbers right now are showing that. He will lose to any one of our Republican nominees. Um, so what I would say is that I think we are at a turning point in California And I think that we are going to continue to win on the issues, which we have been in the initiative space. California voters have been with California Republican Party's position more than two-thirds of the time in the last two cycles when it comes to the ideas and the initiatives. And a lot of those are started and fostered right there in the California legislature, whether it's no-cash bail or split roll or rent control. Um, These are things that they started in the legislature. And we're, it's going to be our job to find those candidates that can connect with them on the things that are most important to them. For them to say, enough is enough. I want to try something new because what the Democrats have served up to us over the last decade has forced so many of my friends and family to leave. And I don't want to be the last taxpayer here either. Yeah. So I'm going to fight and I'm going to do something different. And we got to find the right candidates to do that. And, and I think that we are doing that. All right, C-A-G-O-P dot org. If you want to get more information, check out some of the survey information. It really is damning. I mean, the, the disapproval list um, on issues in California is huge. You know, inflation, immigration, the economy, on and on. And I, I guess, you know, some of the people, whether it's Gavin or, or the Biden camp, what have you, they, they somehow think they float above it because everything is great because they say so. But that's uh, interesting uh, info, essential info. Check out at uh, C-A-G-O-P dot org. Jessica Milan patterson is the chair. Uh, Keep them flying. Good luck out there. Always great to be with you. Thanks, Mark.